All right, so good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Coming to you live from the Gamma Show here in Reno. I was going to say Vegas, but it's not Vegas. Not it's Vegas here. It is this year. Reno, Nevada, Discount Las Vegas. But we're at the lovely Pepper Mill Resort. Yay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a Caesar's Palace, but not... Mini Caesar's Palace. <laughs> yeah, Mini Caesar's Palace. No, it's nice. It's It's been fun so far. So so let's get some introductions out of the way. As usual, I'm Matt, and I'm starting off the morning fantastically here with Tony from Arcane Wonders. Yeah, I'm Tony from Arcane Wonders, and uh, we have some games to show you. So I guess let's let's hit the hit. Oh God, I messed that up. Let's let's get out of the gates on running hot start something. <laughs> it's it's a little early for me still. Uh, but what do you got to show off for us today? Okay, so I have uh, pretty much our entire summer lineup. We we haven't had a release for a couple months now, mm -hmm. and we're we're coming right into the gates of this uh, this summer season with with a number of great games. The first one is Sunchi, which we're actually going to play a couple rounds of. Ooh, fantastic. Uh, very quick, easy. It's the second in our uh, kind of oriental themed, Asian themed uh, games after Onitama. Okay. So Onitama is a two player uh, abstract strategy where you're moving the pieces back and forth. We have an expansion for it coming later this year. Ooh, I'm excited for that. But Senshi is a two to four player, and it's a very different tile taking, stacking, scoring game that uh, really. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll see it here in a minute, but it's something okay. that everybody, I think, is is going to look at and be like, huh, that's a little different, and, and it's in a good way. So uh, that's Senshi. That's the first one we're going to talk about. The next one is we're going to briefly touch on is Critical Mass. Uh, we have two box sets coming in July. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a mech-on-mech -mech combat, uh, blow-up-your-opponent's-mech uh, gold, uh, or goal is to blow up your opponent's mech. And it utilizes a switch that over there. There you player's go. board, where it has your critical components for each mech that needs to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you're taking damage, you're actually removing your armor plates from the board. Oh, as that's it what the cube's function is. That's yeah. Cool. So these are actually armor plates for each of your critical components as you go through. So. So I gotta say, twelve-year-old me is super excited <laughs> to play a mech fighting game. Yes, and it's it's the whole dystopian. It's an underworld. The war happened. Okay. The seas have boiled. The land is eradicated, and uh, the forest to flame. And the only way to survive now is by all of the people coming together in these giant war machines to take over dominion of areas and resources. So they go okay. out into the atomic wasteland in these giant mechs and do battle for resources. I like it. That so. sounds really cool. Okay, uh, the last is our, our Gen Con type release mm -hmm. coming in August. And this one we're really excited for. We've been working on it for a while. Uh, we have partnered with Rooster Teeth to design the game. And then they decided... And we, we worked with them a little bit to uh, put it on Kickstarter. But we just recently have uh, uh, come to an agreement and we're going to be bringing Ruby to uh, U.S. distribution Ooh. and uh, to the gaming market. So Fantastic. we're and really I saw, excited about I saw that. it did really well on Kickstarter. Uh, yes. So I'm sure it's going to be really well received. When can we be seeing that coming to the American market here? Um, it's probably going to be in the Gen Con area uh, time frame that we're, we're bringing out to for retail. Perfect. So. Okay, so let's play some games, though. That's, I think that's what we're all here for, bit. right? Yeah. So... What we're going to be looking at here with Senshi is, I, I have some different tiles. This is going to be the production value, um, as far as what the tiles actually will look like. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so we're going to actually have tiles. They're shaded so that um, there is some variance in most color blindness. Mm -hmm. Uh available uh, ability accessibility so basically once they are stacked they should have some degree of variance so that it can be told okay what they are based on shade but also when you look at them they all each have a different kanji on top yeah I see the so different you can symbols uh, on each one you can take a look at that we try to m make it as accessible as possible for our players um for the this demo uh run through of a couple rounds we're actually just using a prototype uh put little mini poker chips little mini poker chips um and so we're not gambling warrior monks. No, we're not gabble, <laughs> gambling warrior monks. We are, uh, but we are warrior monks. So that is the premise of the game. 
we are warrior monks and our master who we've studied under for the past number of years is ailing and one of us will be succeeding him like the classic kung fu movie style exactly gotcha. so one of us is going to succeed the master and become the next master but we have to determine who is worthy for that absolutely and the person that is worthy is the person who is the most balanced in all of four attributes. So you have strength, which is the red color. Mm -hmm. Agility is green. Honor is yellow. And wisdom is blue. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to score tiles in each of these stacks. And at the end of the game, have the tallest stack. Okay. But the player who has the smallest stack is automatically eliminated. Oh, so, okay. So it's not about necessarily having the Just largest the largest. Stack. It's having the largest and not having the smallest. Eliminating your weaknesses. Yes. So in a two-player <laughs> game, it's going to be a much more uh, aggressive game. I could imagine. Because yeah. one of us is likely going to be eliminated. Right. Um, so we're going to be trying to maintain balance in all four of our stacks. Okay. So let, let, how do you play? So what you can do on your turn is one of three things. And... We can throw one of these right under there. Sure so. thing. Um, and I hope I could see it. Josh, if you could pull the preview back up quickly so I could just double check that. And I uh, should be able to see it from in there. Oh. It's mildly transparent. Maybe I, let me try to refocus that. I can throw it right here. That works. Okay. So basically what we're looking at is that each player will have this little player board. Uh, scoring stacks go on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, your current stacks are here, which we'll talk about in a second. And then you have uh, three different actions that you can perform at the top on your turn. Okay. It's a very simple 15-minute type strategy game. So what we're going to be doing is the first, first action you can take is study. When you study, you simply take a stack from the center and you place it on your board. Now, so these stacks, we have stacks of three of the markers in the middle and they're just randomly placed. Yes, you just mix them up in the beginning and put them into stacks of three. Gotcha. So then once it's... Uh, it, everything set up. The number of stacks determined is determined based on the number of players. In the okay. Game. And it is two through four players. So what you can do for your first action is you can put it on your... You can study, take a stack. Mm -hmm. You can only have a maximum of three stacks on your board at any given time. Okay. If you wanted a fourth stack, you would actually have to wait until one of your stacks is completely scored. So like I would have all of these tiles scored. Gotcha. So how and do I like, score those tiles? And that's what we're going to get to here in a second. So let's say you've you've studied a couple times. You have your guys. I've I've studied a number of times. And then what else can we do? Well, we can train, mm -hmm. which is taking a tile. And when you take a tile, you can take a tile from the top of any stack into your hand and your literal hand. So you can take one of your own. Mm -hmm. You could take. One from the center. Oh. Or you could take one from an opponent's stack. You okay. can't take... The only restriction is you cannot take any tiles that have scored. The third action that is taking is a test. So when you call a test, you're going to take a tile that you have previously put into your hand, mm -hmm. and you are going to place it in your scoring stack. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when a test is called, though, is every single stack that has that color on top will also be scored. So the thing oh. is, is that if you had blue, you would also be scoring during that test. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a balance of the, the available colors and what's happening on the, on the board. So, so how do you call a test again? It's the, th what, it's the third action that you can perform. Okay. So you just say, I'm calling a test for whatever color, for whatever color. And it must be a, one of the token, one of the ones in your, your hand. hand. So the thing, the first thing we're going to do is this. Just randomly grab a, a stack of tiles. Okay. Or choose one. Okay, we've both chosen. These yes. are actually in our hand. Oh, in our hand. Okay. So these are our disposal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go first, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take a stack, and I'm going to put it on my... I'm going to choose to study. Okay. You know what? I'm going to follow in your footsteps there, and I'm going to study as well. Okay. And then I am likewise going to study again. I shall be studying again as well with this one here. Okay. I'm going to perform a test. Okay. For yellow. I, yep. So I'm going to score these two yellow tokens as well. 
Mm -hmm. And now it's your turn. Okay. So then I will be training, and I'm going to take this blue one here from you. And I okay. put that in my stack down here, right? Yes. No, that actually goes to your hand. Oh, it you goes train. to my hand. Okay. Yep, when you train, you take it into your hand. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is... So we can only score when we test. Only when you test. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to train. Oh. Hmm. I will be training as well then. Okay. Now, is there a limit to the a number of markers you could have in your hand? No, there are not, but they are not worth anything while they're in your hand. Gotcha. So I'm going to study. Um, yes, that works. Okay. And then I will... Uh, I'll study as well. Uh -huh. I'm in an interesting position. Okay, I'm going to play a test. Okay. So I'm going to test green. So, so my two <clears throat> will go here, and now you will score your two as well. Nothing from my hand. Though. Nothing from your hand. Okay. Okay. So then I will now... I guess that I will train. I will study... And now I will... Oh, shoot. I thought I had one in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to train again then. So I'm oh, to, you're going to steal from yeah. me. I am going to s do a test. On blue. On Arr, blue. I open that one up for you. So how about I'm going to test yellow then. Okay. Not feeling very balanced over here. I'm going to study. Hmm. I will test. Oh boy. I will test green. Okay. So I just wanted to open up my stack a little bit there. I'm going to train. Oh, mean. I will study. I will test red. Okay. So when does the game end? Once there are no stacks left in the center. Okay. We're probably about two thirds of the way through a game right now. Yeah, it's for a two player fast. game. Okay, so then I will. Man, I'm going to study. Okay. I will study as well. I will train blue. Okay. Or test blue, rather. Yep. And I am going to um this is hmm. I feel like you okay, got I'm me gonna, here. I'm gonna study. Hmm. I am going to train. So I'll steal that one from you. Okay. And likewise I'm going to train and steal this one from you. Okay. I will now train yellow. You're going to test, test yellow. yellow. Okay. And I will test green. I will test red. I will test yellow. I'm going to study. I will study as well. Does that immediately end the game? No. You get a turn, and then I get a turn. Okay. I am going to test blue. And it's only the ones that are directly and on top, On correct? my turn, yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to train. Okay. So, that is the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do is we look at our stacks and who has the lowest stack. That and would be me. You. So, yep. you are eliminated. Oh, now, darn. And I win the game. So when you're saying whoever has the lowest stack, I'm assuming that means that if both players are tied... Then no one is eliminated. And then and it goes, then by it the goes to based stack. on the tallest stack. Okay. Yeah. So the one... And then if both tallest stacks are, are the same, mm -hmm. then it actually goes by who has the no, most chips in their hand as the tiebreaker. Oh. If that's tied, then it goes to uh, the last player who played. Okay. So 
Uh, yeah. That is a, a snapshot of Senshi. I like it. We are uh, we're going end of May. Uh, the two-player game is a little bit faster, yeah. uh, quick uh, lunch-type style game that you can play at any time, really. Right. Uh, components are, are light. Uh, comes in this nice, uh, nice little box. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we, you get more players, the actual uh, strategy actually changes pr pretty dynamically. Because once you have a three and a four player, then it, I'm assuming it slows the game down significantly. Uh, it, you're still playing the game in about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, okay. That's not it's bad just at all. A, because the set number of stacks is still based on the number of players. It's it's twenty four stacks instead of sixteen. I'm thinking along the lines of the analysis paralysis starts to set in a little bit, maybe. Well, with because the what you can do is uh, very simple in actions. You can either take a stack, mm -hmm. take a tile, or play a tile. Right. Basically, you're you're still looking at an a number of choices, but you you have a little bit of ease of use there. Very cool. So, what yeah. uh, what is this game going to uh, retail for? If it's going to retail for nineteen ninety nine. Oh, very good. So, and it's going to come with seventy two of the little uh, plastic uh, markers. I like that they're uh, with a little step up there, so they stack nicely. Yes, on top and of each they're going to stack nicely. The this is actually the production that we're doing. Oh, okay. Um, so if you know, it, it, they really do fit together well, and they have a nice heft. Um, these these are an earlier production that it's a little bit more hollow, and we didn't really like how that came out. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, I wanted to show off generally the what the colors are going to look like. So, yeah, no, we're really happy with how this one came out, and basically that that's Sunshi in a nutshell. We've been, really been uh, happy with it and how it's coming out. So. Fantastic. So, Did you want to look at Critical Mass a little bit? Yeah, let's show off Critical Mass a little bit more. Okay. So, so I, I definitely I've read a little bit about this game online. I saw it getting some hype back in 2016, uh, and then it's it's been slowly chugging along. So you're saying it's coming to uh, the market sometime during the summer this year? Yes, right? we are looking at July. Very good. So the big thing with Critical Mass, and I'm not going to take the time to actually set up a full full game or anything but when we look at it you are going to be in combat against the opposing okay the opposing mech and what you're going to be doing within on your turn is you have a set number of cards based on your your, your max abilities mm -hmm. um you have an ability that is a primed action primed is actually determined by the activate card so uh, the activate card is a card that allows you to set a card as primed. I can show this off a little bit more here. Oh, yeah. So mind you, the green is uh, see-through. It's not supposed to be see-through. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the activate card actually allows you to uh, upgrade your mech in combat. Okay. So you're going to have a pile of cards off to the side, which are deactivated over here, mm -hmm. which are determined based on... On the back of the mechs, what you'll see here is that the back of the mech has a listing of cards to use for quick play, mm -hmm. but you can also customize the cards based on what comes in the pack. Very good. Um, this pack in itself is Patriot versus Iron Curtain. It's the more uh, US-themed mech versus the Soviet-themed mech. <laughs> we have in the other box set the uh, Raijin versus... Uh, Archon and Raijin is the Japanese styled mech. It's much more Gundam yeah, looking. Say Gundam style. Um, and the uh, Archon is actually the scientific congl conglomerate. So basically, the uh, the scientists who hold up in Antarctica mm -hmm. um, saw this impending doom coming to the the world and decided, hey, we better kind of stockpile and get ready for this and that mech is actually much more highly advanced in mm -hmm. technology because it wasn't mocked up later it was kind of we predetermined. Re predetermined so it has a force field that regenerates um <laughs> leave it to those science <laughs> yeah nerds. yeah so basically the their number one shields as they go away they ha it has cards that actually replenishes these cubes oh okay so and and has attacks that say based on the number of cubes or not based on the number of cubes but based on the power of your force field mm -hmm. you deal damage equal to that so oh. it, it's a very interesting mech to come out each each mech has a strong feel and uh and different abilities uh patriot here 
has versatility as its special ability, which mm. uh, basically just says it, it starts with more guns. <laughs> it has more cards. That's the American way. <laughs> <laughs> the Soviet Union one is indomitable. Um, so what happens with Iron Curtain is in the game when you are playing, like every, you you'd have a card, a hand of cards mm-hmm. that are active cards. So what you do is you 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 t- pick a card and then you flip it over, mm-hmm. and your opponent will pick a card and flip over at the same time, and then they'll go into cooldown and such, but they'll they'll trigger based on the speed on, in the top c- corner. Okay. So you play so a, a four it's an action. Uh, yeah. To determine who goes yeah, first. Yeah, so you played four, I played a three. So you're actually faster. You're going to disrupt me, and my ability is actually not going to happen. Uh huh. Where Iron Curtain comes in is the indomitable special ability says that if you're disrupted, turn it on. And then while it's on, it can't. you can't be disrupted. So you're just so going to do your own thing. It's going to do yeah. its thing. And then afterwards, you, you turn it off. So each of the. the um, each of the mechs have a different ability here. And this is uh, a prototype as well. We just got it from our uh, our Chinese manufacturer. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're really happy with how it's come out and how it's looking. I'm going to say it looks absolutely gorgeous here on the table the way you have it here. And I'm a huge fan of uh, heavily customizable characters and games. Oh, yeah. So I'm, this is definitely something that's up my alley. I'm going to be really excited to get my fingers on this when it goes into retail. Yeah, and uh, we have the two sets coming out in July. They're $25 per box. Um it's a two-player game out of one box. You can mm-hmm. play the two different mechs against each other. But if you do have multiple sets, they come with targeting cards, so you can play a multiplayer game as well. Very good. Yeah, and that, and that's that's critical mass. We're going to hold off on talking about Ruby until a little bit closer to launch. So that was our little sneak peek. It that was you a gave sneak peek that basically oh. uh, a week ago we are. Uh, we, and we're going to be doing a little bit with the hall, kind of showing it off, but it is a two to five player cooperative game mm-hmm. um, where you are playing as Team Ruby and Penny against the villains that are uh, Torchwick, Adam, and Cinder uh, from the, uh, the the animated series. So Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're excited. It's, it, it's a really fun game. It's also very hard. Oh, yeah? It, it, well, it... It can scale to be very hard. So gotcha. depending on the scenarios you pick, you can have it a very easy... Uh, experience or you can pick more difficult ones so from what i was if i remember correctly there's upwards of 40 scenarios in there that you could play um, as something to that effect i think the scenarios are 18 18 different objectives oh, okay um yes so i i misspoke the there are 18 different objectives with objective cards that you can play mm-hmm. but then there are scenarios you can pick that allow you to customize what objectives are used and then so there's high a high replayability there yeah. <laughs> so then there's a campaign that you can continue to play scenario after scenario. So you have a, a progressive game as well that you can have different gain experience and continue on. Oh, so it lets you play either campaign or Or single. just a single adventure. You can go, I, I want to play this in, the, in hard insano mode. I'm going to put in <laughs> this objective that brings in tons of grim and this objective that has more uh, henchmen. And I'm going to play as Torchwick who can't be hurt as long as henchmen are in play. And then you just die. No. <laughs> or you can you can go and be like softball easy softball mode. Softball easy mode. Yeah. Or you can go uh or you can go progressive and, and as you gain experience, your decks upgrade, you buy exper- you but you buy different cards that are different higher tiered and more uh, higher strength and then go into the next round. And so there is a definite scalability and replayability in in the Ruby game. Awesome. Well, I think that's all we have time for today, but thank you so much again for joining us, Tony. We really do appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. It's always fun hanging out with you. Yeah, it's it's fun. And I'm going to hold you to that. I expect to hear more from you about Ruby when we get to Gen Con. Oh, (laughs) absolutely. We're we're definitely going to be be out there. Uh, Rooster, working with Rooster Teeth has been amazing, and uh, we really want to make sure that we get uh, every scream from the the highest peak that ruby's coming so yeah fantastic well thank you for joining us we really do appreciate it and thank you all for joining us stay tuned for more live coverage throughout the day here at gamma in reno signing off for now though i'm matt i'm tony have a good one everyone